Hey guys, Cypher here again with some more Master Duel content. Uh, today we'll be going over another one of my replays with the Tri Brigade list, this time featuring a matchup that I know many of you will be interested in. Uh, as a control deck, Eldritch is supposed to have the advantage over Tri Brigade, because the hand traps that we play in a mid-range deck, a deck like ours don't do very much to them. So whenever you go second against these control decks, it's always dependent on what they have and what you have, so it's always going to be a different kind of scenario. But many of you are struggling to beat Eldritch even when you're going first. With this replay, you'll see how our most optimal setup with combo 2 actually answers uh, the Eldritch setup quite well, as long as they don't open skill drain, that is. So with that said, guys, let's go ahead and jump into this replay. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get into this replay. I won the coin toss in this game, so I'm going to go ahead and start by going first. So with this hand that I've drawn here, I need to start with Desires, otherwise I'm not going to get very far. So I'm going to activate Desires. I banish 10 to draw 2. Here I noticed my opponent did not uh, have a response to my Desire, so I, there's a really good chance he doesn't have Ash or Maxi. So I feel pretty safe about going for the Tenki line here. So I'm going to go ahead and start by activating Tenki. Uh, because I already have the Thoroughblade and the Ram Ram in my hand, I'm just going to go ahead and grab Fractal off of this. Okay. And then here, I'm going to summon my Thoroughblade, and I'm going to use its effect to discard the Ram Ram. Because we open both of these cards here, we can actually get an extra monster uh, with Ram Ram here for either an Appaloosa Negate or a Floater uh, for our, our opponent to worry about. So I'm going to use Thoroughblade's effect here, discard Ram Ram, draw a card. I draw Desires. This kind of sucks, but I can put this back with Bear Jitter or Bear Room, so I'm not too worried. So I go ahead and summon Chalkanine. Chalkanine is going to revive our Ram Ram. And then I'm going to use the Chalkanine to summon Dryden's. Dryden's going to use its effect to pop our Ram Ram this time. And then Ram Ram is going to summon our Chalkanine. And then I'm going to use Dryden as material for Tiger Mortar. Tiger Mortar is going to detach a material and then put a material underneath our Chalkanine. This will allow us to use its effect again to revive another monster, this Ram Ram in, case, uh, in this case. Then I'm going to use both Xyz monsters to summon Ferrigit. Ferrigit is going to use its effect to special summon the Nerval. Nerval will use its effect to banish both exceeds to summon Bear Broom, and then these three uh, will go into Appaloosa. So, you're wondering why um, I decided to just make it with three materials instead of four. I felt pretty comfortable with three here, and I left the Ram Ram uh, as a floater for my opponent to have to worry about. So, um, in this case, in most cases, you should go for, uh, for a four material Appaloosa, but I thought with this play and... Uh, with still having Borbo in my deck, this would still be a good option to just keep here uh, for my opponent to worry about. I'm going to have the full setup, so um, uh, with this Ram Ram here, I thought it would, might be a good idea to leave it here. So that's why I left it here. And I'm going to trigger all of these effects here, Farragut, Fair Broom, and Nerval. So I'm going to grab, uh, I'm going to get my Surge. Nerval is going to grab my Karis. I put the Desires back with... Uh, Bear Room after I've drawn after I got Revolt, then I'm gonna draw a card. And that gets me another Revolt, so I'll just put back Fractal and hold the Revolt. So, uh, turn passes over to my opponent, and I have no idea what he's playing yet. He activates Prosperity, gotta let this go through. He reveals Eldritch cards, so I know that's what he's playing right now. So he's gonna grab the Scarlet Sanguine. So here you'll notice that he did not uh, activate anything yet. So I'm assuming at this point, like, well, he may not have a Golden Lord, so I guess that's all right. Um, because he didn't, he didn't, he hasn't set a um, uh, a sanguine off of any of his golden land cards yet. I'm just, I'm just going to assume that this is the first card he set. It's obviously a guess, a guessing game, right? But um, in this case, I'm just going to guess that my opponent has set the sanguine here in the middle. He sets four cards here, and then for some reason, he starts with Eldritch later to, uh, I assume, target our Appaloosa. Okay, so this is the first part of the uh, first turn board that I wanted to address. Uh, Appaloosa actually answers the Eldritch here, and this is really important because uh, that means that Eldritch can't just target a Revolt and then force it out. So uh, not only that, um, because Appaloosa protects that, uh, it also stops the uh, Lord from coming back from the graveyard. And you'll see here that in, in just a moment. So the chain link's resolving, Eldritch does not send the card. So he's going to send another card here, sending his Torrential Tribute for some reason. I have no idea why he did that, but as you see here, I'm going to negate that with Appaloosa. And again, this is also huge because now it means that if he has any 
a Golden Land cards. Uh, he's going to have to rely on the Sanguine to actually uh, get another Golden Lord out to make his uh, Golden Land traps live. So uh, this is another. Uh, this is why one reason. This is one reason why um, our setup from Combo Two actually answers the Eldritch setup pretty well, because Appaloosa stops the Golden Lord com from coming out at all during his turn. So. Uh, that's one thing I wanted to comment on there, so I'm going to negate the Eldritch. That's not going to come out now. And because he has... oh, I see, he has the Eldlixir here. So, he's going to set the uh, Conquistador. So, this is not a uh, this is not a problem... the Conquistador is not a problem as long as we can snipe the uh, Golden Land here. So, or not Golden Land, sorry, the uh, uh, Eldlixir Sanguine, or the Sanguine Eldlixir. So, um, going off of my gut here, I'm going to assume that this the first card that he set was the Eldlixir. So I'm going to activate Refold, summon my uh, three monsters here. That's going to summon Shrike. I'm going to put everything on the chains here. Farajit to draw, Nerval to search, and then lastly Shrike to banish. So Shrike's going to go with the gut banish here. I'm going to banish the card that he set. And luckily enough, I did banish the Sanguine. And then Farage is going to draw, gives me another Fractal, so I just put the Fractal back. For turn, I draw Ash Blossom. And this is another really important card to draw here, guys, because uh, he may have another Sanguine. So uh, if you have Ash Blossom against this matchup, it may be wise, uh, especially if you have this board, to just hold this Ash Blossom. Don't use it against an Extravagance, because Appaloosa is going to stop uh, the Lord Send and the Lord coming back. So all you have to do when you have Ash Blossom in your hand against this deck is just hold it. And then if they activate the uh, Golden Land to, or excuse me, the Sanguine to special summon a Lord from deck or graveyard, you just Ash this. That's a hard once per turn, so they can never get the Golden Lord out. So which turns off the rest of their uh, Golden Land traps. So another important uh, in uh, interaction to keep in mind here. So I'm going to start by discarding uh, the Nerval that I had for my Karras. Uh, the reason that I do this is because uh, because Karras is a beast and it's special summon while I control Shrike. This will allow me to trigger my Shrike a lot earlier uh, than going for like a Winged Beast play, or a Banished play. So I summon the Karras, and here you'll notice that I opted to put the Omen, as, or the Shrike as Chainlink 1, and the Nerval as Chainlink 2. I'm doing this to uh, chain block the Shrike in the event that he might have Solemn Strike. So if he has Solemn Strike, and for whatever reason he didn't strike this Karras, um, uh, he could not strike. He could not strike my Shrike to prevent it from banishing a back row. So that's why I set up as chain link one here, uh, and Nerval as chain link two. So that way he could like kind of chain block uh, the Shrike's banish effect. Okay, so he's, this is going to resolve. So with Shrike resolving, I'm just going to banish one of, another one of his back rows. That gets rid of Imperial Order. Karis is going to banish three to summon Doom Eagle. Doom Eagle is going to return the Lord here. This is why Doom Eagle is important, guys. Not only is it the level three to, or the link three to climb into access code, it just returns really important monsters. So, access code talker comes out, it targets the Doom Eagle, bumps itself up to 5300. Doom Eagle destroys his last trap card, and then Brave Brew Banish ban destroys the trap, and then I'm just going to attack for game. All right, guys. So that, in a nutshell, is how you beat Eldritch when you're going first. If you open the most optimal board after finishing combo 2, your setup, as you can see, actually answers the Eldritch strategy quite well. So to recap, Appaloosa negates the Lord Send, which protects your Revolt for a possible end phase banish with your Shrike. Uh, and she also negates the Lord from coming back, which is another means to turning off their Golden Land cards, with Conquistador being the most annoying. While I did get lucky in that replay by banishing his unknown set Eldlixir, Sometimes they will discard a Golden Land card, which will, they will banish in the end phase to set their Eldlixir. When that happens, all you have to do is flip Revolt for Shrike and then banish that known set Eldlixir to even further turn off their Golden Land cards. Doing this should put you in a good position to just kill them on your turn. And lastly, Ash Blossom is the MVP against this matchup. I was lucky to draw it there near the end of the replay, but it's also a huge deal because if he had another Eldlixir, I could have just negated it with the Blossom. So. Remember guys, Ash Blossom will actually solve a lot of your problems whenever you play against this deck. And that's basically it. If you guys like this replay, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to see more content. Have a good one guys. Thanks for watching.